today's first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles. We hear the mention, uh, the intervention of a man named Gamaliel on behalf of Christ's apostles. Gamaliel is identified as a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin, a teacher of the law respected by all the people, says St. Luke in Acts 5, verses, verse 34. Later on in the book of Acts, in Acts 22, verse 3, St. Paul himself will say that he was educated by Gamaliel in his religious formation. Known also as Gamaliel the Elder, he was the grandson of the famous Jewish teacher Hillel, founder of the school of Hillel. Most modern religious Jews actually follow that school, from what I understand. They follow the school of Hillel. They follow his interpretations of the Torah, which, tends to, which tend to be more lenient and more tolerant. So it's quite a big deal to be the grandson of the great Hillel, whose teachings endure among the Jewish people even to this day. Gamaliel himself is described by the Talmud as a Nasi, a prince, and as a Rabban, which is a master, uh, as president of the great Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. The Mishnah, which is a collection of Jewish oral teachings, says that Gamaliel was one of the greatest teachers in the history of Jerusalem. We see his wisdom, we see Gamaliel's wisdom, in the short passage that we heard today from the book of Acts. The context of the passage is after the resurrection with the apostles preaching Christ raised from the dead and performing miracles as well. We heard of these things in the first readings uh, yesterday and also Wednesday. The apostles were arrested by the high priest Annas and the Sadducees and they were put into prison. But in Acts 5, verses 19 and 20, it says that the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, miraculously freed them, so that the very next day everyone saw the apostles out in the temple in Jerusalem, again preaching. Annas had the apostles brought back in before the council and ordered them to stop teaching again in the name of Christ, to which St. Peter himself replied, we must obey God rather than men, Acts 5, verse 29. His response, of course, enraged the council to the point that they actually wanted to kill them, as it says in Acts 5, 33. The tensions were very high, and that's where Gamaliel actually stepped in. What did Gamaliel do? Well, first of all, he subtracted the object of anger from everyone's presence. He ordered the apostles to be put outside for a moment. That was actually quite smart. He, what he did was he removes the lightning rod, as it were, and then it gives everyone in the council a chance to calm down. If someone or a group of people have enraged us to the point where our emotions are more in control of us than our reason is, then it's not the best solution to have them remaining standing in front of us as we try to decide their fate. That's not a very wise thing. Gamaliel not only mentioned, maintains his calm in the midst of the storm, but he perceives this unhealthy dynamic that's going on, and so he has the apostles step outside for a minute. That's a good first step. Secondly, he appeals both to faith and reason in addressing the members of the council. First, to reason, he reminds his brothers of two recent charismatic figures who tried to seduce the Israelites into starting some type of political uprising. Their names would, were Theodos and Judas the Galilean. They both failed and their movements dissolved rather quickly, Gamaliel said. So Gamaliel actually helps the council members to see reality from a wider, from a broader perspective not just from the narrow perspective of their own jealousies and passions. And then he actually makes an appeal to faith. He says to them, I tell you, keep away from these men, referring to the apostles, and let them alone, for if this plan or this undertaking is of men, it will fail, like the previous two uprisings he mentioned. But if, his, if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even find yourself opposing God, he said to them. Acts 5, verses 38 and 39. Gamaliel knows that what comes from God will not fail, cannot fail. Whatever comes from men will eventually fail. Whatever comes from God will not fail. We can see here how the Lord used Gamaliel not only as a mediator between the zealous apostles on the one hand and the proud and 
angry Jewish council on the other, but he also used Gamaliel as a voice of reason to appeal to those who had crucified Christ, to help them to stop and rethink, to think about uh, what they were doing now and about what they had even done to Jesus. And the council actually took his advice. Uh, St. Luke tells us that they released the apostles, even though they beat them before doing so, verse 40. So clearly, uh, you know, even though they released them, they beat them, so they hadn't had a completely change, uh, the heart wasn't completely changed, but uh, they were persuaded by the wisdom of Gamaliel. The church actually venerates Gamaliel as a saint. Tradition says that he embraced the faith and was baptized by Saints Peter and Saint uh, John the Apostle, together with his son and also with the Pharisee Nicodemus. That's according to the Patriarch Photius I of Constantinople. The old liturgical calendar of the church actually celebrates his feast day on August 3rd. Uh, it's August 2nd in the Eastern Orthodox Church, which is the day the Franciscans celebrate the feast of the Portuncula. In our community prayers every morning, the Fran we Franciscans pray. We say, reward, O Lord, with eternal life all those who do good to us in your name. Certainly Gamaliel was rewarded with the gift of faith and eventually with the gift of eternal life, and it was certainly connected with the good deed which he had done to the apostles, which we read about in today's first reading. So let's ask him, Saint Gamaliel, let's ask also Our Lady, Queen of the Jews. We can say that she's Queen of the Jews because Jesus is King of the Jews, and she is obviously their Queen. Let's ask them to pray and intercede on behalf of the Jewish people, that they too may receive the gift of faith, a gift more precious, as we know, more precious than all the treasures of the world.